Okay, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to this session, Rapid Power BI Development with ChatGPT. My name is Pedro Reis, and today I'm going to present you a little bit of a different session in something that I hope you guys can take away from this 20, short 20 minutes. So here is uh, a Power BI developer with his Pro license. A couple of years ago, everything was simple. He could develop his reports. He could publish it to the Power BI service. And with these skills, he could do a lot of things. But then suddenly, maybe he already needed to know a little bit of SQL, a few things. But then suddenly, he needs to know more things. He needs to know governance. He needs to know uh, DevOps. He needs to know Python. He needs to know, um, he needs to know now Fabric. Whoa, he needs to know Spark. He needs to know Notebooks. He needs to know AI. He needs to know MLOps. And it's getting overwhelming. Does anyone here feel that uh, maybe AI could help us, at least in one of these things I said? Raise your hand, please. OK, so almost everyone, which means that we try to have the dream, which is AI to help us on these things. So my name is Pedro Reis. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP MCT. You can remember me as the Portuguese guy, uh, just to simplify things. Uh, I run uh, the Portuguese uh, user group. Um, and uh, what I'm going to show today, um, Originally, I submitted a couple of sessions, and I had three sessions accepted this year. And two of them, one of them is a short 20-minute version of this, what I'm presenting today. And I have another one, which is a 50-minute session deep dive. So I don't want to repeat content. So I prepared five different demos today. And for tomorrow, if you guys are interested and you like this, we have another session tomorrow with six completely different demos, more on the code generation on that, OK? So the first thing I'm going to start to show is can ChatGPT help us? For instance, we already know that we have the copilot for DAX, but in the scenario, let's say that you don't have a, a, a capacity where you can run copilot, or there are some operations where you cannot run them. Can a different version of ChatGPT, can it help you, or a large language model, can it help you to do some operations? So imagine this case. This is um, um, a visual from uh, Kerry Kolosko. Uh, he has a very nice website and just presented a session um, like one hour ago. And in this, you can see the formatting of the, the visual, the state, right? And in the state, you can see here this nice formatting of the, the card, um, of the, the status. And if you go to Power BI, you usually, on the conditional formatting, you need to fill the entire cell. How can we do something very customized with a very custom format like this? And it's difficult to do. But if we go to um, the website of uh, Kerry, we can see here she has a very nice repo showing how to do this with SVG inside the DAX measure. And for instance, if you open one of them, we can see here that there are some samples already created and customized in order to do uh, this. So what I'm going to do is try to do from some scratch something like this with the help of uh, uh, ChatGPT. So I have here um, a demo, and I want to, for each of the countries, if my growth is over 20%, I want to do uh, a green um, button. And if it's lower than 20%, I want to do a red button. What I'm going to do is I have um, here, I have already one very basic measure. And ChatGPT, you guys will see that it works better if you already give it something working. So I picked up and created the very basic structure for a measure index with SVG that can create this button, as you can see here. And of course, if I put this button uh, here, you can see, well, it's just a placeholder. It's not dynamic, right? So let's ask ChatGPT. And I have here a prompt that I'm going to get it. I'm going to show you guys. Let me go to ChatGPT. And here, I'm using the plus uh, version, OK? So I'm not using the 3.5, the free version. I'm using the ChatGP, the 4 version, in which you have multimodal capabilities, meaning that you can also paste images and do uh, many things. So my prompt is going to be, um, can you adjust the following DAX measure to return an SVG image with a peel-like button in red, and the text not OK on one scenario, and the text uh, OK and in green in the other scenario? And ChatGPT is going to start trying to create the code. So SVG button with text. And let's see if it can return me my code. So you see, it's adjusting, it's creating some variables, right? It's doing that for me with um, uh, my text to display, with the colors, and it's adjusting. So the SVG code, let's see if it worked. Let me copy the code. And if I go to Power BI, 
and I replace here in my demo. Let me add another um, measure here. I have a, just a place a blank measure here. And if I add it, and the formula, I add something like this here. And we can see it's perfectly working directly without anything. So you guys can go like to a repo, like Keri's repo, get the code and ask ChatGPT to iterate it and to adjust it to do something very custom like this. Another demo I want to show um, is, let me go forward. So I saw this, this is um, a demo from Jefferson Alves. He, he does a lot of things. He adds CSS to uh, some of his uh, reports and visualizations to really enhance the, the visualization. And so we can see here, he's going to add some variables. He has like a YouTube channel and shares how to do the adjustments. And then for the image to grow or to change its characteristics with CSS on HTML. Let's see if we can actually do this. Uh, remember, I'm the Portuguese guy, so some um, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo might be somewhere in our my presentation. Yes, he's still going to play in this summer, uh, seems like, and Pep with 41 years old. So I have here two players, and this is just um, uh, the HTML light version, which is a visual, the, the only certified visual I found that uh, we can, uh, HTML and certified, because many organizations can only use the certified visuals. So I'm going to try to, I have this uh, image here, and uh, I can change the player. What I'm going to do here, I have some kind of prompt prepared here. Ah, so I have just a very basic measure with uh, uh, CSS, you see here. And I'm going now to change uh, basically the code of my image source. So I have a prompt ready here. I'm going to copy it. And the prompt I'm going to request to ChatGPT is going to be something like oh, this. Update this measure, which is in an HTML visual and with CSS. So that in increases the size and decreases the size. And it loops this every two seconds, OK? So I don't need to go search. I never learned CSS. So maybe this can help me do this. So let's try it out. OK, so it's generating the code. In the first demo, I'm doing the demo live. Or the other ones, I already put the screenshots because maybe you guys were in the keynote like Adam and Patrick said. And it takes a bit of time. In 20 minutes, I want to show a lot of things. So it finalized. Let's see if it's working. It's worth the shot. My base image, let me replace the code. OK, so my image now is moving. It's increasing and decreasing in size. Uh, let me get now my second prompt, which is, and I can uh, be very creative with this. What I'm going to ask it, update. If it's Cristiano Ronaldo, it's going to move in a line and then return to the position. If it's Neymar, it's going just to go a little bit all, all around the place. So let's try it out, see if it can work. <laughs> and it's going to replace, according to my selection in the slicer, let's see if this is going to work. You know, I'm asking something simple, but the creativity is the limit, guys. You can really try out different things. So it's creating all the CSS for me. OK, almost there. And let's just see if it works. Almost there. Image.zig scale, you can see there. It's, even the names are intuitive. OK. Moment of truth, so I'm going to my base image, and now let me replace the code, copy, paste, hope it goes well. Oh, and Cristiano Ronaldo is already moving to the right. But if it's Neymar, as expected, he's moving all around the place. So something very interesting, and you guys can give it a special touch in your data visualization and in your reports, maybe with this. So uh, second demo. I wanted, and the things I'm going to show today, I'm not going to uh, do everything that works and show you just the things that work. I'm going to show you the things I try to make it work and if it works or not. This is what I'm trying to do. So I have a data uh, model, uh, a sample that I got on the web, and I'm sabotaging this model, meaning that I'm changing like a primary key uh, to a, a name column. And I'm changing a data type of another column from a, a varchar to an integer. And then 
I'm going to uh, copy the image, and I'm also going to export the SQL script that's uh, generated here somewhere. Yeah, I can. This is a Vertubello. This tool is just to design data models, and then you can uh, download the script which generates this. And so I'm going to let me go to the next slide. I'm going to prompt it um, to analyze just a screenshot because ChatGPT for has multimodal capabilities. Analyze this image and tell me if you find any errors on this data model, right? So, and uh, it tries to do this, but unfortunately, the image resolution was not enough. It didn't work perfectly. I tried the second time, and it actually worked at identifying the two errors. So you can see on the first one, it thinks the product, um, uh, the ID is still on the product key, but it's not. I tried with the SQL, just uh, attaching the SQL script and see if it works. And uh, very clearly, the two errors were identified. So imagine you have like huge scripts and you ask to analyze for potential uh, issues um, regarding, for instance, I ask to, uh, potential issues with relationships, keys, data types, and table designs. But as more of fabric becomes code, you can see where we are going and uh, really doing some data quality, code quality, and stuff like that. Uh, I also uh, used the Van Arsdale sample, and I sabotaged the model. So I put some blanks there on an ID column, and I also uh, put some non-numeric characters in one of the columns. And I asked it, I uh, uploaded the Excel to test the data analysis capabilities. It didn't work. The file was only 30 megabytes, but it didn't work. I tried to export the two CSVs from the two tables uh, separately. Also, uh, didn't uh, work directly. So I went to the Excel and just uh, cleaned up everything except the two tables in Excel. I imported this one, and uh, I asked it to identify any potential data quality issues. I got a response. Finally, it could process the amount of data that I gave it. And uh, on the geo sheet, the invalid entries, it clearly uh, flagged two empties. But on the outliers, it told me there are outliers, but it didn't uh, actually caught the error that I was trying to do it. So don't trust on this blindly. And when someone puts a video on YouTube, oh, ChatGPT for data analysis, I wouldn't pet, put my hands on it. It might work, it might not work. It will work better in the future. Third use case, report design assessment. How many times? Because we don't have a very strict criteria to analyze uh, reports and see are they better than this, are they worse? Uh, how can we uh, measure you know, the quality of a Power BI report? It's difficult, it's a lot subjective. And so what I'm going to try to do, uh, I picked up, the, um, uh, you guys know Maven Analytics, they post like uh, challenges um, like every month. And I got one of the most recent ones, which is like an American coffee tasting test. And they launched on LinkedIn a challenge, and people just download the data set. And they, uh, uh, with the data set, basically they do their sample report, and they upload it in a page and post on LinkedIn the screenshot. So I got uh, the latest four submissions, just the screenshots from people that submitted this uh, last week. And uh, now what I want to do, with the help of ChatGPT, is I'm going to upload uh, the sample data set, and I'm going to ask it, act as a jury for a Power BI analytics and data visualization contest. And uh, uh, I, the rules are here. And then I'm going to ask you to evaluate the submissions on a 1 to 10 rating, just with a screenshot. Uh, maybe some reports uh, have more pages, but this is just for uh, sample purposes. And I wanted first to uh, analyze the data set of the context, to analyze which is the data, which kind of things can we derive from there. And secondly, a difficult one, prepare a framework to classify each of the submissions, right? Let's see if it can work. And I have an output, but even better, as you guys can see, we have a table with five criteria to evaluate a submission. I think this is, is fantastic, right? We can see, for instance, 20% for accuracy, 20% clarity, 20% insightfulness, 20% design and aesthetics, 20% communications. And then I just copy-paste the screenshot for each submission, and I put it, and let's see what happens. Oh, the submission, you see, each of the criteria has a classification. And all the four one, you can see that uh, it rated the second submission, which if we go back, the screenshots, you see the second one there, from the left to the right, it was the highest rated uh, submissions. So you have all the criteria here, I think it's really fantastic. And I asked it, can you suggest improvements for the, one of the submissions which had the worst score? 
Uh, it tried to give some, um, some suggestions, but it wasn't very specific. So I precised my prompt. Be more specific, suggest alternative visuals for each of the donuts, suggest metrics for, that make sense for this data set, and so on. So I asked for this. And a lot of things, but he actually suggested alternatives to a donut chart. Um, it suggested different uh, uh, w um, analysis that we can make from different dimensions. So some things more useful, some things less useful, but it's getting there, it's quite uh, interesting to, to use this. Fourth demo, troubleshooting. Can ChatGPT solve issues that people have and ask each other, they, they go ask a colleague? I always tell to my juniors, first do your own research before coming ask to me or to the more senior guys. Do your di due diligence and you can do this with Google. Can ChatGPT work on this? So I went to the forum and tried to get some common problems that people post there. Can ChatGPT work with uh, this? Act as a uh, support uh, community forum e expert and try to solve people's problems. One submission, uh, I just post a screenshot, the, there is a division by zero. And there is a suggestion, oh, it identified there is a division by zero, can you fix the measure? It didn't work because uh, I asked the guy in the forum, can you send me the PBAX file? And the problem was that there wasn't actually data for the previous month because he was filtering for January and in the previous year they didn't have the data for December. So actually the solution was, oh, if you filter another month, it works perfectly. So uh, ChatGPT couldn't understand that it needed more data, but it gave a suggestion that, that actually the division was by zero. A second use case is someone wanted to do a calculation and on this calculation, uh, for instance, if on the previous line there is the same day, for instance, 15 to 18 of March, it's, it's four days, but if the 15 of March was already counted in the previous line, don't count it. Very complicated to do. Can ChatGPT do it? No, it couldn't do it. It tried to do something, hallucinating a little bit. Uh, can you use visual calculations instead? Here is the documentation for the visual calculations that Jay just posted, and uh, can it do it? Uh, no, it couldn't uh, do it with the visual calculations. So I tried to, to do it myself, and I, you have here the solution. It's just one line with visual calculations, and you can solve that problem. So in the future, I think this will work, but so far, as it's not trained yet on the visual calculations data, it couldn't work. Also, common issues on databases, if you have like a big error, and you post and ask for suggestions on it, usually it will not pinpoint your error, but it will give you a thought process that you can follow. For instance, you have an error on the Impala database, and you can uh, first optimize the query, ensure it's optimized and avoid pulling unnecessary data. Seems like a good suggestion. Increase the memory location if needed, adjust the timeout settings, uh, break down the query. Suggestions like this, it's not perfect, maybe it won't give you the answer, but it will point you on an organized thought process for this. Final demo. Uh, number five, on knowledge, because we all want to improve sometimes our knowledge on a few things. So I asked uh, ChatGPT, can you create, um, I'm learning about Power BI uh, model types, can you create a three-question assessment to test my knowledge? And you, here you have question one on data connectivity modes, question two on composite models, and question three on aggregation tables. It, the questions are really nice. I answered B, C, C, everything Okay, and it confirmed that my answers were the correct ones. Fantastic. But as we progress, what we really want to do is to be able to classify answers that are open text. This would be fantastic, right? For interviews, for our knowledge uh, approach, for educations. Professors do multiple choice because it's hard to correct things that are open text. So I asked it, can you produce a work document for me with um, this assessment? And here it is, the word document with the assessment, and I can even answer it, upload it back, and it will be corrected and give me suggestions on how to improve this. I think it, this is really great. As GPT 3.5 evolves to GPT 4, you can see that before it couldn't pass some of the exams like the LSAT, it had 40%, and now it has like 80%. So what I tested today that didn't work well, maybe on the next year I come back and it will work just fine on GPT 5. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and tomorrow we have the other session. Thanks everyone. And please provide your feedback, what you liked, what you didn't like, and connect with me on LinkedIn. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.